the top seven lists I use nationwide in virtual wholesaling real estate. These are going to be the lists where you can use basically in any type of market out there. Now, this is very powerful stuff, and most people have to pay a ton of money to learn this stuff. So do me a favor, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and let's get into it. So as somebody that makes millions of dollars every single year virtually wholesaling houses, I can tell you straight up, there's motivated sellers everywhere. And if you know how to find them, you will get paid accordingly to the problems you solve. The bigger the problem, usually the bigger the assignment and check you're going to get. And so that's why when I pull a list, I want to make sure there's a ton of motivation so I can get paid very well. So let's get into these seven lists that I think you should be pulling absolutely right now. A lot of these lists are free. Some you have to use a paid software for, but overall they're amazing lists that work anywhere. List number one, these are the code violations. Guys, code violations are one of my favorite lists ever because code enforcement is actually driving for dollars for you right now. There's like three or four of them looking for ugly houses to slap fines on. So number one, they're slapping fines on properties, which makes people motivated because now it's costing them more money and they can't afford to fix up the house. And they're driving for dollars for free. Taxpayers pay for it. So this creates a double whammy motivation. They have an ugly house and they start finding the person that has an ugly house to make them want to sell it to you. It's an amazing list. And did I mention it's absolutely free list you can pull? That's right. That's why you need to go to your local code enforcement or if you're virtually wholesaling, search code enforcement space county and request for all open code violations for the past 30 days. I highly recommend you only go after ones with tall grass, structural damage, and mold and mildew. Other type of code violations, I really don't recommend. Now, if you do want to learn how to pull them step by step and actually watch me behind the computer pull this list, I highly recommend you go to freewholesaling.com, my free real estate wholesaling course. List number two are the probates. Guys, pound for pound. I've said this a million times, but if you want to make the most money per thousand leads, probates is going to be hands down the best one. And why is it? Number one, there's a ton of motivation, but honestly, number two, most wholesalers know it's a tough list to pull. So they're not willing to pull that very tough and difficult list. And because they're not willing to pull that tough and difficult list, you can profit like crazy. Probates is basically a list of somebody who passed away and you're contacting the heirs to the property and just seeing if they want to sell the property. You're not aggressive, you're not mean, and most of the time they don't want to sell or it's a very sore subject with them. And hey, let them wait and have them call you back six, seven, eight months later when they're ready to sell it. And usually those probate properties, it's neglected, ugly houses that no one's really taken care of, and they're amazing wholesaling deals. The truth is a lot of these people that inherit these ugly houses are out of state, they don't want to deal with the property, and it's just too emotionally distressed for them that they just want to get rid of it for cash. They don't want to fix it up and go with the realtor and go through the whole hoopla with it. They just want a quick cash offer and do get rid of the property. If you're really into creative financing, this is an amazing creative financing tool. So many of my lease options and subject twos are done with probates and they're not ever really talked about too much. Number three, this is the vacant list. Guys, if you could find a list of properties just sitting there, nobody living in it, just sitting there rotting away and the owner has to pay taxes every single year, of course, they're more likely to sell it for cash. Heck, I believe according to Adam data, over 1.3% of all homes in every single city is vacant. Yes, some of them are second vacation homes, but really that's more of a Florida thing. A lot of them are just sitting there and nobody's living in them. These are an amazing list to be going after. You can pull this list by using a service like listrei.com, L-I-S-T-R-E-I.com. Unfortunately, there's really no free way to do it. You have to be a 501c3 and do all this crazy government regulations to get the vacant list. So that's why I just got to go to PropStream and just get the list and just pull it from there and use the criteria as I say at freeholsting.com. Number four, the tired landlord list. The tired landlord list is an amazing list. This is basically a list of people that are owning rental properties. They owned it for a while. They have some equity in the house. And these people have a lot of problems. Usually it's when they have a problem tenant and you reach out to them at the perfect timing through SMS, text blasting, cold calling, other sources where you reach out to them. They just want to get rid of the house. And it's a big problem because if there's a squatter or a tenant that's not paying, you and your cash buyer can help provide a solution to maybe buy the house with a bad tenant in there and a victim. And I've had this all the time where I'll have a property where there's a bad tenant and he just doesn't want to move out and the owner does not when do the evictions too much stress for them and we actually buy the house me and my cash partner so the cash buyer buys it and he evicts the tenant because he's done it all the time he's a regular landlord and we get a really good discount i give some of the discount to the cash buyer and everybody wins this is another list you can get from listri.com which makes it really easy to do but if you want to do it for free i highly recommend you go to the evictions list which is basically a list of all the evictions in your local court and if you reach out to those homeowners they're definitely going to want to sell or just want to get rid of the house heck if it's an eviction that already happened and they don't have a tenant in place maybe 
maybe because the property is vacant, they can just make a quick run and get out of the property. I'm telling you, there's a ton of tired landlords out here and it's a big secret. Now, since you're on my own YouTube channel, I do want to reward you. You're in the underground of wholesaling real estate by subscribing here. So I'll tell you this, the biggest tip I can give you on tired landlord properties is if you use PropStream or Batch Leads, go to the tired landlord section and only market to the individual owners. Statistically, when you buy a rental property in your own name, that's usually not the smartest decision to have. And really savvy real estate investors and landlords put it in an LLC name to protect themselves from legal liability. That's when any savvy investor is. But if you're a non-savvy investor, usually you're not the best at renting out property and you're more likely to have landlord tenant problems. So go after tired landlords that are only individually owned. And I can tell you, it's an amazing list. And make sure you don't reach out to any landlords that own more than six rental properties. Those are usually not the best wholesaling deals. Number five, the tax delinquency list. Heck, if you haven't paid your property taxes and you're behind on it, the government gets a little crazy. Usually after one to two years, they're going to try to start taking over the property and get you out. The government always gets paid. So that being said, when someone's behind a year on taxes, it's not a good thing. And usually they don't pay the taxes because they can't afford to. That's probably one of the first things you need to pay because that's one of the few ways you actually get your house repossessed or auctioned off is by not paying the mortgage and not paying the taxes and not paying the HOA. And the cool part about it is it's very easy to find a tax delinquent property because the government makes it very easy to find people that are not because they're trying to embarrass you to a point and they make it very easy for anyone to get that public information. Think about it. If you're keeping up with the Joneses and you find out that John Smith over here and his wife Sally haven't paid their taxes in two years, what's going on with them? They make it very, very stressful. So if you go to your local property appraiser and ask for a list of all the properties that are behind on taxes, usually it's pretty easy to pull. Obviously the paid services, listrai.com and zachdata.com always have it. Quick bonus tip on here. I'd rather you SMS text blast than cold call a list like this. Cold calling will work, but usually when people are behind on their property taxes or behind on the credit card payments, when you're behind on your credit card payments, you start being pulled on credit bureau companies and credit service company lists, and then it just gets a little too crazy and they're less likely to pick up the phone. If you do want to get some SMS text blasting, just go to smszack.com. Number six here, this is just a very general list I use all over the country, but it's just the high equity list. Just think about it. If you have enough equity in the deal, you're more likely just sell it for a big discount. And most of my deals where I make 30, 40, $50,000, they're all pretty much from a high equity list. So that means they don't owe too much on the property. And if somebody's behind on their taxes and they don't owe too much, they're more willing to take a big discount to get rid of it. And that's why I love the high equity. It's pretty simple. It's not complicated. Now for the high equities, there are some filters I do recommend. Make sure they own it for at least three years. Make sure the property is not worth a billion dollars and make sure they don't own a lot of other properties. Now, if you want to learn how to do these filters the right way, just go to free wholesaling.com, my free wholesaling course, and I'll show you exactly how to pull it the right way. When I do high equity in virtual wholesaling markets, I can never go wrong because it works in every single market. The biggest players in wholesaling real estate in every single market pretty much will go after a high equity list because it's big, it's a big net, and you catch a lot by casting a big net. And it is a little more expensive, but it works for the big guys kind of like me. So that's why I always use it. Number seven here, this is sort of like the high equity list, but I add things on top of it. This is what we call the stacked list. For example, if there's more than one motivating factor on a list and I combine them together, there's a huge motivation for that seller and it's absolutely amazing. For example, if I pull all my code violations and then I pull all my vacant properties for a city and then I stack them on top of each other and say all on one big master list and say, which one of these are duplicate? What this basically means is a Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel will tell me that there are 50 properties in this list that are code violations and vacant properties, which means there are vacant code violation. Which means there's a code violation and no one's living in the house. That is a super stacked motivated list. On top of that, sometimes I get a probate list and things like that. It's absolutely amazing. If you use services like ChatGPT, you can just put a data set in there and say, find the duplicates for the addresses on this huge data set and it'll do it. Or you can learn how to do it in Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. It takes a little time to do, but once you find duplicates on all the master lists you pull, they're really good, amazing stacked lists. You don't have to use any services to find stacked lists like this. Just do it for free. It takes a little work, but learn how to find duplicates and master lists. And it'll do very, very well. Stacked lists are something that not a lot of people talk about. It was kind of big three or four years ago. Now it's making sort of a comeback because everyone's doing very similar things. And this is something I've always used, but stacked lists is something you should do. So pull a bunch of government lists, pull a bunch of paid lists, put them together and see which ones are repeating multiple times. And you will find some amazing wholesaling real estate deals. Guys, these are the lists I use all over the country to find the best wholesaling real estate deals.
deals no matter where I'm at. The only thing I really have to adjust is the average price I'm going after these properties. So in Miami, I don't want to go after properties more than 700 grand. If I'm going to be in Dayton, Ohio, I don't want to go after properties that are over 150 grand. They're all yin and yang with every single market. But I promise you, if you start pulling this list and these type of lists, you'll do very well. Guys, if you got any value from this video, do me a big favor. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe. Go to freelisting.com and I'll see you guys soon. This is Zach and signing out. Have a blessed one.